hi you all welcome to my channel my name's Della and today we're going to be doing my March wrap up so in the month of March it was my birthday month so in my March TBR I'll link it down below I said that I only wanted to read books that begin with the letter D but what I realized about myself is that I failed failed really hard I read two books that begin with the letter D and then completely abandoned my TBR and just read whatever I wanted and to be fair I've always known that I'm a mood reader but I just thought it might be fun to challenge myself and I did challenge myself but I also discarded that challenge really fast so the first book that I read was dirty work I'll put a picture Ding. Okay. and it's about a woman who's she's a gynecologist and she performs abortions and she's currently going through a tribunal because one of her patients nearly died on the operating table none of that is spoilers by the way that's all on the synopsis so i really like this book i i don't think it's something that i would typically go out and read if it wasn't for the challenge that i set myself and then failed <laughs> i like how we sort a different point of view typically when i read books about abortion it's usually from the person having the abortion that kind of point of view so it was nice to get a different point of view as in from the doctor's side i think the only time i really ever heard abortions from the doctor's side was adam's k book this is gonna hurt and he just mentioned it very briefly but at the end of the book we she really goes into depth on how an abortion is done in the book they that she says you can skip this part like it doesn't add anything to the book but i think it it adds something to your understanding i suppose would be a good word to be empathetic to what she goes through i think enjoy is a weird term to use for a book that is about someone's pain but i did enjoy this book i listened to it on audiobook um, I can't say which is better because if I'm honest I'm not very good at listening to audiobooks anyway but it was a really fast really easy listen and I'll listen to it when I'm walking to and from work at the time I wasn't in quarantine just to let you know. The next book I've got is The Deepest Blue by Sarah Beth Durst and this book is about girls who have to learn to fight spirits in an island and if they prove themselves then they can become an heir or they die and becoming an heir is like an heir to the, the the throne for some reason i thought this was a female female romance book um it's not <laughs> but for a good chunk of the book i i did think that and when one of another character rogue got introduced i was like oh, okay so this is her romance nope it's not that it's not a female female romance whatsoever so this is i suppose kind of like spoiler territory so i'm just gonna put a spoiler here so she gets married at the start of the book and at the end of the book they're still married still together but i like how this wasn't a very romance heavy book like she talked about her love for her husband whose name's like forgotten but i'm bad at name but she talked about her love for her husband throughout the book but really the whole plot was around our main character and her struggle to survive this island and also help the people around her she's very concerned about the village and her family back home and yeah it's such a good book i, I would recommend it i'm really interested i don't think there's going to be a sequel but the ending did pique my interest and i do want to find out what kind of happens but i don't think there's going to be a sequel the, there is um other books in this series i later found out um, I think one book, possibly the first book in this series, um, they're all technically standalones though I believe, um, called The Blood Queen. That book looked quite interesting so I might pick that up. And this is about the time when I failed my TBR. <laughs> so I picked up Dune and it wasn't like there was anything wrong with it, it's just not what I wanted to read at the time. So I closed that and then I picked up another book called Death of the River Guide that wasn't really doing anything for me so i closed that and then i kept looking at other books that began with d but nothing was really calling my name and then i was scrolling through youtube one day just because i was bored and hoping to find like a random playlist i could find and but i found one of chandler's videos i'll link it down below i think it was like a spook font or something and i was just like i'll, I'll whack this on and one of the books she really liked in it was strange grace and it sounded really interesting so i thought why not i'll pick it up and this book is about about a village who every seven years they sacrifice their best boy to a devil or satan i think it's satan i don't know a demon who lives in this really spooky forest and then they get seven years good luck after it and it centers around three main characters and they all fall in love with each other i really like it it's a love triangle that is actually a love triangle because all characters are actually in love with each other. I think this book was really atmospheric. I think the magic was really cool. It's not fantasy, but it might be. 
I think it's more magical realism. I don't know. I'm not sure what genre really this is. I suppose like fantasy. Let's just say fantasy. I think the romance is really cute and like all three main characters falling in love with each other and their journey of falling deeper in love and turning their love into a relationship. This book is, I would say actually like romance heavy, but it was one of those times where I actually really enjoyed the romance in it. It's very dark and very mysterious and kind of body horror-esque but really enjoyed this book. So this month was my birthday month and to celebrate I did a video called 29 books that I love. I'll link that down below. Um, my next book was one of those books that was on the list and that was Hunter's Moon. In that video that I did I described this book as an assassin werewolf who falls in love with a millionaire and it's kind of <laughs> all you need to know. It's just really fun and I really liked it. It's also pretty steamy. At one point he like, the main guy, licks water out of her belly button. Oh, <laughs> that was so gross. The image of that, like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> like no shame if you like do like that but oh, no and the assassin werewolf tony he is part of the mafia and he's talking to another assassin who's like he's 12 years old and this 12 year old talking about um another woman who's a sex worker says that she's just a whore and in the book he says that this is a problem like he recognizes this is a problem and i really like that because this book came out in 2004 so I really like how in this book that it stayed away from the whole she's either a good girl or she's a slut stereotype and I also really like how there's no mean girl in this book like there's other girls in this book who the main character the female main character is jealous of because he says because they're prettier than her but it never turned into oh I hate that bitch it always like is more of an envious but she's my best friend kind of thing like I have loads of female friends who I think oh they're so much prettier than me but it's never come from like a a place where I'm like well fuck that bitch you know can I just read you the back and point something out that I just find I don't know kind of strange he listens when she speaks and somehow convinces that maybe her problems are entirely insurmountable he even thinks her little pot belly is sexy so he's a werewolf everyone has flaws <laughs> I don't know why it's such a strange book. I really like it. The next book I read is The Red Queen. Now I picked this book up because my friend was talking to her sister and she said it sounds like The Cruel Prince. And I was like, I love The Cruel Prince, let's give this a whack. So this book is about the Silvers who control everyone and the Reds who are like slaves basically. And our main character soon realises that she's got powers even though she's a Red and Reds aren't supposed to have powers, only the Silvers are. I really like the magic system in this book. I'm still a little bit confused if the Silvers are just like do they just look like normal humans or do they look kind of like fey? I don't think they do, but in my head they did, but I don't think they do. I also, I like the main character. I think she was bitter and I understood why she was bitter. However, she did have this really strange thing that she kept mentioning. She kept saying how the Silvers lie so easily, but she's a thief. And I don't know why, but it just kind of annoyed me that she kept being like, oh they're such dickheads and they're so easily cruel but then she steals from poor people sure she does it so she can feed herself and her family and the more she like integrated herself into their society she went and she had to start lying more herself she kept being like oh and now i lie so easily but like you were a thief <laughs> this also had one of the tropes that i detest the mean girl trope i hate i cannot express to you how much I hate a pointless mean girl trope. So the mean girl in this is Evangeline. So this isn't um, slight spoilers, so I'm just gonna put spoilers here. Our main character is found out that she's got powers and the Silvers decide to marry her off to one of their sons, a prince, and then pretend that she's a silver. And this other girl competes to marry the prince that will inherit everything and he'll become king and she'll become queen but for some reason this girl really hates our main character and keeps being like you better not get in my way and all this shit and it's just so rude and mean to her and i just don't get why because this girl is going to become queen and our main character like there's no way she's going to become queen so why does she hate the main character so much I can understand that she came out of nowhere and then just marries one of the princes but she wanted to marry the main prince anyway to become queen which she got so why did she hate the main character so much i hated it i hated the stupid plot it just made no sense to me and it also just like 
it just felt like such inane girl hate and I just, I have no time for it, I'm sorry. But because of it, it really got in my way of the enjoyment of the book. And I feel like if the mean girl element was taken out of the book completely, and other elements of the story were developed, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. Like the magic system, I found the magic system really, really interesting. And also the queen, I found it really interesting. Like she's a dick, she's like a mean girl, but you get why she's a mean girl. She is not nice whatsoever and I really liked her. And I felt like we could have really explored more about the story, the main character, the magic system, if we weren't so tied up in this stupid girl hate thing. Will I pick up the sequels? I don't know. Um, I think Victoria Aveyard has only written in this series and I do want to read more from her but I'm not sure if this series will be for me. My next two books I technically finished on the first but I'm going to include them anyway. So for some reason I decided it would be really fun to do a 24 hour readathon of all Sarah J Mass's A Court of Thorns and Roses series and I had a great time. Now I didn't sleep at all and I did also film it so you can watch me slowly decline and just go even more insane. And that video should be up next week. But I only managed to really read these two and a couple chapters of this book. So these are a Beauty and the Beast retelling series. The story starts off with Feyre. Um, she is providing for her two bitch sisters and her invalid father. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if he's actually an invalid. I think he just can't be bothered. She shoots a wolf. The wolf turns out to be a fae. Tamlin comes over, um, which breaks some treaty. Tamlin, our main male character, breaks the door down and that's kind of how it starts. Not kind of, that's literally how it starts. So I've re I've reread this series now um, about four times. <laughs> I really like this series. I, I think my first book is probably my favourite actually. Everyone really talks about how the second book is their favourite, but I really like the first book so much. I really think it's a good introduction to the world, the characters, and also builds up on how the characters will work in later books. Um, and now I'm gonna talk about spoilers because I need to get this out. So, spoilers. I'm Team Tamlin. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it out there. I, I'm not sure if I was, like, if my mind just turned to goo at some point in my 24 hour readathon, but I am strictly Team Tamlin. And let me explain why, because there is a reason. So, Tamlin, in the first book, he gets to know Feyre, they don't like each other, they have a little bit of banter. He tells her <laughs> that she's got clean hair. Um, I also, I told my boyfriend that he's got clean hair to kind of see what <laughs> he would say. I just find his like really shitty flirting really sweet. I think it's adorable. But he falls in love with Feyre, right? So they go for a whole book and he, he learns about her, he learns about her interests, he buys her paint supplies so she can paint and heal. He looks after her family when he didn't need to whatsoever and he makes her feel more confident within herself. And in the second book we find out that Feyre is mated to another guy. Not mate as in, you know, you're right mate, more like mate as in let's have lots of sex. <laughs> now, Rysand doesn't fall in love with Feyre. He just is mated to her. So automatically he's in love with her you know he says it in the second book that when he first saw her she he knew that he was in love with her but that's all because he was her mate like he didn't get the time to know her really he just automatically that's it bam i'm in love and in the second book and in the third book oh tamlin was got he got fucked over he also he, he got made into such an arsehole but here's i've got another theory for this so in the second book Tamlin and Feyre both are suffering a lot from what happened to under them under the mountain and they have a lot of PTSD obviously because they went through terrible times and some of them Rice and actually caused and sure he took away some of the people's memories so they didn't realize they were suffering but they were still suffering watching someone be tortured is in itself a torture and that was something he caused you know like it's great that he protected um his like city it's great that he became like an arsehole to do that. But Tamlin, but Tamlin actually tried. He didn't side with her in like a sneaky attempt to take her down. Like in 49 years, what did Rysan actually do? Nothing, he did nothing. <laughs> he just plotted for 49 years. But Tamlin, he actually had to, he sent out his troops, even though he didn't want to, he didn't want to send out his troops. And they all got slaughtered just to find someone that he could 
hopefully break this curse and even if they did find someone to break the curse what were the chances they would actually fall in love with him so in book two when Tamlin's like slowly loses his mind we see that when Feyre runs to the bathroom and throws up and has these awful nightmares he doesn't really go to her but at the same time it works both ways Tamlin was in so much pain himself he was clearly going through massive amounts of trauma and it was clear he didn't really know how to handle it so he pushed favorite away so he became more protective and he became abusive not really physically but but he did lock her up against her wishes and you could tell that she was suffering they were suffering i wish instead of tamlin turning into a psychotic lunatic that their relationship naturally just deteriorated because they both suffered so much trauma that they couldn't be together that it was too painful for them to be together basically what i'm saying is i really like tamlin team tamlin Woo. <laughs> he does turn into like you know a dick which is sad but you know what i realized when i was reading these books i just love this series so much <laughs> in its flaws in its everything i just this series is a great series i love it it's one of my favorite series it's fun and it's sexy and i cannot wait for the other books to come out I do actually have the little novella but i haven't read it yet oh also you might have noticed stella your books don't look like complete trash today that's because in my 24 hour readathon um i organized my shelves <laughs> thank you very much for watching my video my socials are down below i'm currently reading a court of wings and ruin tell me what you guys are reading thank you very much bye